You didn't find her attractive? No. Not at all. I guess this is my newfound career, so I'm going to say what on my mind and what I think, brother. First of all, uh, that's his mother. Wrong, right, or indifferent, she going to lie, steal, kill, and protect her child. That's what she's supposed to do. But the apple don't fall far from the tree, man. You got to realize that. You know, he didn't get all this from his daddy because he didn't know his daddy, even though they try to say his daddy was some big time drug dealer in the whole nine yards. You understand? He didn't get this from his daddy. You got to realize, man, you know, his mother had a modeling agency and it was alleged that it was also um, ladies of the night, a prostitution ring too. Or the, these ladies was doing things other than modeling. So the apple don't fall far from the tree. You know? So now you got to understand this and looking at her and some of the stuff that he was saying and their relationship has changed since I knew them. Since I was around them. You understand? This man was talking about that his mother could take her palms and bend over and put them down on the floor. Not bend over, but she could she, she could stand straight up and put her palms on the floor, bruh. He's saying that about his mother. Who describes any of their mother action like that in a sexual way? And then, you know, <laughs> I don't know how many dudes do kiss their mother in their mouth when they 50, 60 years old or something like that. That's them, that's their whole thing, man. But that was a little kind of weird for me. And then his mother wore the same white fingernail polish that Cassie described that he liked to see her and other models in when she was describing her loss, her her uh her lawsuit. And what's crazy to me is is that man, it seemed like him and his mother had this. I don't wanna to get too deep, man. This Oedipus complex thing. You know what I mean? And a lot of people are gonna say, yo, Oedipus complex. Well, let me just tell you a brief story so you'll know. Oedipus was, it may have been Greek mythology or it was probably Greek mythology or something like that, but it's a story about a, 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 a young man that was told that he was gonna kill his father and marry his mother. So on the way, this young man had grown up, you know, he didn't know that he was an orphan and then was adopted by a family. He thought the family he was with was his mother and father, but it wasn't. So on the way to this town, he gets into an argument with this other man and he kills him. He kills that man. Then he goes into that town. A lady is weeping about her husband being told that her husband was dead and he ended up marrying that lady, which was his mother. So Sigmund Freud came up with this thing about this Oedipus complex, about a sexual or a sexual relationship, whether it's physical or mental, with a mother and a son. So I'm looking at his mother and him on the couch, and both of them are getting IVs after one of the Diddy parties, allegedly. I'm gonna say allegedly because I wasn't there and I didn't know, but they showed them both getting IVs on the couch. So my whole thing about this thing is that I'm not saying that she was ever at a freak off. She was ever at that type of party, but you can't tell me Miss Janice Combs who was always at the regular parties didn't know nothing about the freak off parties. This is the same dude, bruh, that <laughs> used to disrespect his mother. So I seen the, the love now that they have for each other only on film and camera, you know, on, 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 on the YouTube or Instagram or wherever they were showing and stuff like that. But just the same guy that Kirk Burroughs once told me he slapped his mother. 
And I told everybody, had I known he slapped his mother after I told Kirk Burroughs, Kirk told me after I straightened his ass out for cussing his mama out. His mother came in the limousine and he was on the phone and she said, yo, why don't you tell these people like that? And he just cussed her cleaned out like on some, didn't I tell you to stay out my motherfucking business? And I was like, yo, I was shocked. She didn't say nothing. I said to him, I said, yo boy, let me tell you something. If you ever cuss your mama again, I'm gonna beat the shit out you. You ain't gonna bring nothing but bad luck to us treating your mama like that. So I guess he ain't treating his mama like that no more, but I don't have no qualms in her defending her son. I don't have no qualms in her defending her son. You gotta understand that, man. Miss Janice Combs been around for a long time and she's a trendsetter. Where you think little Kim, Mary J. Blige, and the rest of them get that blonde hair from? She popped up in the club with the blonde hair, the nails, the eyelashes, way before they was doing it. You know, people used to think that she was little Kim mama or little Kim was trying to be her daughter because they used to say they look alike. But I don't have no qualms in her defending her son. That's what she's supposed to do, man. And if, and if she didn't, I would look different at her. And, you know, like I said, I, I don't blame her, man. You know, I really don't blame her. I, I remember a time like, <laughs> and this is when I stopped working for Diddy, is that uh, we was in the office and she, she used to just come at me and it wasn't in a way in which you do and a, a, a person that's there to protect your son. You know what I'm saying? She's just always bothered me for whatever reason. You know, people laugh and joke and say that when I say this back in the day, you know, I'm six, seven, 30 in the waist, handsome in the face. You understand? She used to come at me a certain way that it made Puff real mad this particular day. And I don't know what happened. I'm outside the office. And, and he got Justin there. So his, my responsibility is him and Justin, nobody else. I don't give a sh what goes on in that office, what happens, stuff like that. My responsibility is him and Justin, that's it. Now they got interns, they got everybody walking around the office the whole nine yards. She said, yo, Gene, I need you to go to my car. You know, I said, go to your car? She said, yeah, I got some food in my car. I want you to go get it. I said, I'm not here for that. That ain't what I'm, I ain't here for that. I'm not going to get your food. She was like, why everybody do what I tell them to do except you? I said, cause I don't work for you. I said, I don't work for you. Why are you always ask me when you got all these interns around here to do like that? And Puff must've heard something. Puff came out that door. Why are you always messing with Gene? Leave Gene alone. He was talking to his mother like this. He was like, yo, leave Gene alone. You always messing with Gene. Stop it. From that, and then he said, yo, Paul, figure something out. I said, he ain't got to figure nothing out. After I finished working for him, I never went back. I never went back. So she was dating young guys back then. So, you know, that's her thing. You know, the way she dressed is not age appropriate. And I know some women gonna say, how she supposed to dress? She could dress whatever she wanted to want to. Now listen to me, man. Nah, I, I, I ain't gonna have my mama around my friends or nobody with some come me draws on and talking about, you know, she my mama. I don't give a sh I ain't gonna be talking about my mama is bending over, putting up palms on the floor with her white fingernails. So listen, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just reminiscing and thinking back, man. Uh, I could see through their whole experiences and what they've done and how they've been towards each other back and forth, this, that, and the third, that her son is right now is in the fight for his life. You understand? But instead of being his friend, she should, or whatever she was, or however she was, she should have been a mama and checked his ass when he was doing all that dirty shit and when he was doing all that shit.
that he was doing and he's been accused for. And that's what it is. Have you spoke to anybody at Bad Boy since the news broke of Diddy and Cassie? Well, I spoke to Kirk Barrows and uh, he told me some shit, hey, bro. <laughs> it's, some, it's some things that I didn't even know about way back in the past. You know, like when the City College tragedy was going on and everything and Diddy was on suicide watch. You know, Kirk Burroughs was like, yo, man, I should have saw, he told me he should have saw this coming with Cassie and the way he treated women when he slapped his mother. And I was like, he did what? And Kirk Burroughs said, yeah. I just thought because of what he was going through with the, you know, the tragedy, sh it was like, I, I, I was stuck on stupid for a minute, but he was like, yeah, I thought that he would grow out of it or it was just because all the shit he was going through when he slapped his own mother. I said, Kirk, let me tell you something. I said, Kirk, don't you remember when I told you when he cussed his mother out? And I think he was even that, Kirk. When he cut, we was getting in the limousine, he cussed his mother out. He told his mother to stay out of his mo mofo business and I, and I told him, man, you ever talk to your mother? You remember that situation? He said, yeah. I said, Kirk, why you didn't tell me then that he cussed his, that, that he slapped his mother? Because if you would have told me to slap his mother, I'd have beat the shit out of him, Kirk. He was like, Gene, I thought he was, you, you got to realize he was just a kid and I thought he was going to grow out of it and all the stuff that he was going through. I said, my man, that's a bunch of, that's a bunch of bullshit right there. Do you understand? Somebody should have whooped his ass way back then. When you do your mother like that, you don't care about no woman in the street. And he was like, I know, Gene, but he was just a kid. This came from Kirk Burrow's mouth himself. I was like, yo, that shit is crazy. Had I known that back then, yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't have worked for no dude like that, man. I wouldn't, have, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't even F with him. I'd have told all the dudes in the same gang, and we probably would have beat the shit out of him when he came around. Nobody was going for no shit like that, man. He slept his mom? Bruh, according to Kirk Burroughs, he was in a depression. His mother was trying to do something and his mother was saying something and the Nick slapped his mom. You know, I said, yo, and I know everybody gonna say, yo, why this shit coming out now in the whole nine y'all? This is a part of why he do the shit that he do to women. And people gotta understand that. This is the part of why he do the things that he do to women, bro. Because if you do that type of thing to your mother, you know, I heard him curse his mother. I checked him on that. But had I known he put his hands on his mother, I don't give a f Excuse me, sorry about that. I don't care what kind of thing that he was going through after the City College tragedy. Nah, it had been a real tragedy for his ass. Yeah, that's wild, man. To push your hands on your mom, man. I don't know what to say about that, man. That's crazy, man. But speaking of Kirk Burroughs, he did an interview with LA Times and he said that he saw Diddy punch a female back in 94 at Bad Boy offices to the point that they broke a coffee table and he had to break it up. Well, Kirk Burroughs would know him being the president of Bad Boy at the time and he cleaning up a lot of puff shit. You know what I mean? So if anything went down, Kirk Burroughs would know because Kirk Burroughs would be the one that had to go in there and mediate and clean up all the shit that he would do. You know, but like he said that, you know, he thought Puff would grow out of this shit because he was so young being in that type of field and having that kind of position. Did you see the IG live that Puffy and his mom did? And Puffy, he was shouting out Mason, showing him love for, you know, him being a part of the um the No Way Out album. And, you know, his mom, she cut it in. And, you know, I guess she, she didn't like him shouting out Mace and she made a comment telling Mace to stop messing with her son or whatever. I guess mom, mama wasn't feeling Mace. And Mace is a celebrity. And by him having a platform 
to say something about her son, you know, she would say that. You understand? I don't have a, I've said more about Mace. I've said more about Diddy than Mace have. But maybe because I don't, I'm not a celebrity, I don't have a platform and he didn't say my name. She didn't say anything about, and you too, Gene Deal. And, and, and maybe because she might still find me sexy. <laughs> she says she looking. What you mean by that? His mom was trying to talk to you back then? I don't, I don't wanna. <laughs> what? What? That's, that's how we fell out, bruh. That's how we fell out. You don't know, I thought you watched the Gene Deal show, Art. Right. Let no, me- No, man, tell man. me about that, y'all ain't know that. Oh my God. Yo, one day, uh, Puff and Justin was in the office, right? And right. sometimes I gotta watch Justin, but since the grandma up there, you know, she watching Justin or something, I still gotta keep my eye on Puff. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know who security gonna let up sometimes, and this, that, and the third. So, it used to like every she, she used to have a restaurant and she used to bring food up to the office and give it to people. Right? So this one particular time, you know, she used to always like do in the windows to me. Gene, why you don't never what you call? Gene, why you don't never, Gene, why you don't like this? But I never even, you know, paid her any attention because it's always Miss Calm. It ain't Mama Combs, it ain't Janice, it's Miss Combs. You understand? I gave her that respect. But she used to always throw in the windows and you know when somebody find you somewhat attractive. And then because I used to get in Puff ass because Puff used to be disrespectful around his mother. You understand? I'm glad they got a better relationship and they got a better understanding because she know I said it before. You understand? When he cursed out, we was getting in the limousine. This is when the office was on 19th Street and Fifth Avenue. He said, didn't I tell you to stay out of my motherfucking business? He was talking to his mother. And I said, boy, let me tell you something. If I ever hear you cuss your mother again, I'm gonna beat the shit out you. You ain't gonna bring nothing to bad luck to us. Don't you ever cuss your mother again, nigga. Gene, but I told her to stay out of my business. Nigga, you wouldn't have no business if it wasn't for her. I'm not playing with you, man. Now you need to apologize to her. She slammed the door, cause she, she, she was gonna get a limo with us at this time. She just, she just left and went the other way. Now, we was in the office one time. This one time, Justin heard, she brought some food up. And she like, Gene, I need you to go downstairs and get this food out the, the truck or the van or whatever she had on now. And I need you to get out there. I said, and all these people's in the office. It's a thousand interns that could have did that shit. But I know she just wanted to have, she wanted to show that she had power over me and I would never give her no power over me. You understand? Cause she used to always ask me to do shit. I know what, you know, she probably really wanted me to do, but I wasn't feeling that. So now I'm sitting there like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not here for that. So she got all messed, riled up. Everybody do what I tell them to do except you. Who do you think you are? Stuff like that. I said, I'm here for Puff. Anything happen to him while I go down there getting your food? It's a situation. Puff overheard the thing. And Puff came out and said, yo, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. Why are you always messing with Gene? Leave Gene alone. This came out of his own mouth in his office. And there's people who was there who witnessed the shit. And from that point on, Paul started getting this other dude from my block, around our block named Stretch, because he was NYPD, to take, some of my, take my days. And I just said to myself, man, I ain't fucking with that no more. And that's how we fell out. That's how it ended. That's how it ended. 
So she was trying to get at you on the low. She was trying to come on to you. That's why she kept messing with you. But you wasn't going for it. You wasn't checking for it like that. You wasn't interested. Not at all. Nah, I wasn't gonna knock the dust off that, bro. Not, not me. You didn't find her attractive? No. Not at all. But man, um, Reggie Wright Jr. He said that um he felt like you was lying about chasing down the car that shot Biggie. And he said that um you said that um you chased down the car in some hills. And he said in that area it wasn't no hills in that area. How you feel about him saying that? Yo, he can say whatever he wanna say, bruh. But I even told anybody and everybody, I got $50,000. I got $50,000 if they don't believe it was me and Tone who jumped in that car and chased that, um, that Impala. Everybody know it, the FBI know it, the LAPD know it. It was me and Tone who jumped in that car. I don't see none of them put it up. I don't see none of them saying, you know, you can, tell, you can say whatever you want to say. Your mouth is just like your asshole. Everybody got one. You can say whatever you want to say. But put up or shut up. The money on the wood make the betting good. I know what I did, bro. Tone said, Gene, come on, let's go. We jumped in the car. And we chased the car. And it seemed like we was going up a hill like this. It seemed like we was going up a hill. Not it, not no hill like this. You know, these niggas is talking about, you know, it, <laughs> I've lived in New York for the last 30 years. So, a uh, better. So, if we should have slant like that, I'm going up like a little hill. I'm going to, when we got up to the top, uh, and it seemed like a hill, we going up in a slant like this. It seemed like a hill to me. So I'm saying this. When we got at the top, we look right, we ain't see nothing else. And I see your tone. We might as well get back to the, um, we get back to the uh, Peterson Museum. See what's going on. You know, niggas ain't got no guns or nothing. Paul's the only one that had a gun. I heard you make a comment before, man, and you said that um, after Biggie got killed, Puffy, he had a conversation with Miss Wallace, and he told her that he didn't know you. Why do you think he told her that, man? Because the LAPD was saying, if you want to know what happened that night, <laughs> uh, talk to Gene Deal. And he had, she had told Miss Wallace that a couple of times. So Miss Wallace was call, calling over to Bad Boy, saying, I need to get in touch with Gene Deal, the person who was doing security for Puff. So, me and Puff had said a long time ago that if anything ever go down, don't tell nobody my name in the whole nine yards. But, if you gonna tell the LAPD my name, if you gonna tell the FBI, if you gonna tell any law enforcement people my name, you understand? You might as well tell Big Mama my name, but he told her he didn't know me. The reason he probably did that was because he knew that I was gonna tell Ms. Wallace all what happened. Cause he know I exchanged that night. The last time I seen Puff in California before we got in the car and to take him to San Diego is when he grabbed both of my arms. Gene, we gotta pray, we gotta pray. And I pushed that nigga arms off of me and I said, yo, pray for what? That nigga's dead. So that's the last time I saw him, you know, in California. And no, Cause he was in the car with Paul and them and they was going to San Diego to fly right out of uh, California that night. So he didn't tell Ms. Wallace because he knew I wasn't going to lie to Big's mama. He knew I was going to tell Ms. Wallace everything that happened or what went down. Especially the part when he was trying to get this kid and I was I, I was wondering, I was like, yo, why is he? Because it seemed like Big was like, Big wasn't going to go to the vibe party. But every day, man, you go into the vibe party, we gonna do that. We gotta go there, man. We gotta go to the vibe party. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go there. So, I know some cats was trying to get at Big, and that would've been a good place to get it at. You know what I'm saying? Get down at. But. 
you made a comment before, man. And you said that the SUV that Biggie was in, when it started getting shot up, you said that the driver, he put the SUV in park instead of pressing on the gas. Is that true, my man? Because that's pretty weird, man. That's crazy to me. Because, brother, if you waiting at the light, you don't put the car in park. Especially after your friends them have blew the light. The drivers in front of you, everybody know, is follow the leader. I shouldn't have to tell any grown ass man that's driving that if I run the light, you run the light. We all run the light. We all get the ticket. The police stop all of us. That's how it goes. Now, if you picture this, you at a light, the car's in drive, you hear pow, and that shit is close to you. Do you put the, do you put your foot on the gas or you throw it in park? You put your foot on the gas. He threw it in park. You got one motion with the foot to go forward after that one shot. You got to go through neutral, reverse, park. Right? He chose to go through neutral, reverse, and park. Open his door and jump out like the rest of them. And he could have been hit too, but Big was so big he took all that. 